all right so hi all thanks for joining in we have ivan today here and he's going to help us actually uh, master our selenium test uh, basically that's what his talk is about bulletproofing the test selenium test and uh, he is going to help us deep dive in and uh, this session is um, brought to us by the source lab so we like to thank them so the stage is yours ivan now Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, so uh, my name is Ivan Krutov. Uh, probably some of you uh, have already seen me uh, like two years ago uh, in Bangalore. Uh, unfortunately, this year it's not possible to meet uh, offline. So uh, uh, today I'm talking in online mode. And uh, today I would like to uh, talk about the bulletproof uh, selenium cluster. So this will be like a uh, live uh, demonstration how to easily create a bulletproof uh, selenium cluster like from scratch and start running your test uh, in, uh, in in a dozen of minutes. So a few words about me. Uh, being a software developer during the last decade, my main experience is related to Java and uh, Golang programming languages. Uh, my main activities during the last uh, almost seven years are called with a buzzword DevOps. That means that I'm uh, creating and maintaining various infrastructure. And one of the uh, biggest products uh, I'm working on is a big selenium cluster uh, also which is uh, important for uh, today's uh, talk i'm one of uh, core maintainers of selenoid and related products so first of all how big is the cluster i'm working with uh, compared to a typical selenium grid having 50 browsers and executing 10,000 browser sessions per day my cluster has more than 5,000 browsers running in parallel and executing more than two and a half million browser sessions per day these browsers are distributed across five data centers. The average load in the cluster is about 4,000 requests per second. The traffic is more than uh, two gigabit per second. And this cluster is certainly uh, working all the time. This cluster has all popular browsers and platforms, including last 10 versions of Firefox, Chrome, Opera, all versions of Internet Explorer, Microsoft Edge, Android emulators running on real hardware servers, iOS simulators running on Mac minis. And for uh, some teams, we also have real devices, phones and tablet PCs connected to the same cluster. So some of you could also be uh, using one of the tools we are working on, including uh, Selenoid, an open source uh, Selenium protocol implementation running browsers and Android emulators and Docker containers. Moon and enterprise uh, implementation of the same protocol, running everything uh, in the Kubernetes cluster, and also browsers and online testing platform like Sales Labs, Browser Stack, Testing Bot, uh, and so on. So, if you have any questions related to one of these tools, don't hesitate uh, to ask these questions right after my talk. I think uh, most of you would agree that Selenium is nowadays a de facto worldwide browser automation standard. Selenium appeared in 2004, but uh, since 2009, uh, its architecture is uh, being called Selenium WebDriver, uh, looks like the following. It consists of a Selenium server handling uh, test commands, a browser installed in the user's uh, operating system, and between them we have a WebDriver binary, a standalone a binary translating test commands to browser-specific commands. So for every browser, there is a separate uh, web driver binary. For example, for Chrome, we have a Chrome driver. For um, Internet Explorer, we have IE driver. For Opera, Opera driver, and so on and so forth. So a Selenium web driver architecture uh, seems to provide a good uh, decomposition between uh, browser automation components. But anyway, uh, its reference uh, implementation uh, of this, uh, the, the reference implementation of the Selenium protocol uh, seems to suffer from uh, from issues, uh, I'm speaking about Selenium server. So for example, uh, it has a manual and uh, complicated installation. You need to download, uh, install Java, jar files, run everything manually and so on. Uh, you can also have a lot of issues when running browsers in parallel, uh, your test can uh, be slow, can freeze and so on. Uh, by default, Selenium server, um, is using mutable and uh, mute browsers having mutable settings. That is to say that you can accidentally go to browser settings, 
for example, uh, configure a proxy server uh, incorrectly and everything will stop working. So browsers are fragile. Uh, it's also difficult to run uh, several different versions of the same browser uh, on the same host, just because in, usually installing a new browser version will completely remove the uh, older one. Uh, also, you can you may encounter uh, browser and web driver compatibility issues, and you will need to dive into uh, the web driver documentation to understand how to fix this. So all these uh, all these numerous uh, issues led us to uh, creation. We just we decided to create our own implementation of Selenium protocol, and uh, we named it uh, Selenoid. So Selenoid uh, is uh, a uh, Golang application, a, a standalone server using uh, Docker to launch browsers in containers. Uh, when you request to launch a browser uh, to Selenoid, uh, it's uh, using Docker API to launch a container with this browser. And then everything is running inside this container. So when you uh, finish running your test, this container is automatically removed and your operating system remains just in the same state it was before launching the test. Uh, so now it, as I said, is running browsers in isolated containers and every such container has inside everything needed to run uh, to open pages in, in browser, including a Nix server, a, an application allowing to start graphical, uh, graphical applications like a browser, uh, compatible versions of the web driver and the browser, and uh, other stuff like fonts, flash player, uh, encodings, and so on. So everything needed to correctly uh, render uh, the pages in the browser, which is uh, very important. So now it comes with a set of ready-to-use images for all uh, recent browser versions, including uh, all Firefox versions starting from 3.6 and above, all uh, Chrome versions uh, starting from 48 and above, uh, Opera versions uh, starting from 33 and above, and also uh, Opera Presta versions. We certainly also have images for Android. We also have documentation how to build images for Internet Explorer, so everything seems to be covered. Okay, uh, so uh, just five seconds. So uh, this is was the motivation of creating uh, Selenoid as a solution, but uh, as I said, uh, our goal is to be able to run uh, hundreds of uh, browsers uh, in parallel. And uh, nowadays, uh, even the most powerful uh, server can run up to 100, 100 browsers in parallel. That is to say, in order to run thousands of tests, we need uh, to, uh, to, to distribute the browsers across uh, several or even probably several dozens of servers. But the problem is that uh, even having a lot of servers, all these browsers should look to a user like a single uh, Selenium server. So we need some technology for uh, scaling Selenium. Traditional Selenium approach uh, is uh, for scaling uh, Selenium is called a Selenium grid. So probably some of you uh, have uh, been working with it uh, uh, yesterday. They, they were workshop related to Selenium grid. And traditionally, Selenium Grid um, consists uh, of uh, two main parts. Uh, it has a hub, uh, which accepts all uh, user requests, and uh, one or several uh, nodes connected uh, to this hub, and which are actually being executed browser sessions. Uh, this uh, traditional architecture has, uh, unfortunately, also a lot of issues. So, uh, for example, uh, this hub seems to be a single entry point to cluster, and it seems to be also a single point of failure. That is to say, if uh, this hub will uh, go down, the entire cluster will become unavailable. Uh, so, also um, such uh, how to say such cluster uh, it consumes a lot of memory just because of Java and. Uh, also, there is no uh, stuff like authentication and authorization. So uh, having all these considerations, we also uh, just uh, created a different uh, approach for scaling Selenium. Uh, this approach, this tool is, call, is called uh, GoGrid Router or simply GGR. And the main difference between GGR and uh, Selenium Grid is that 
uh, GDR doesn't require a permanent connection between uh, hosts with Selenium and this uh, load balancer itself. Uh, what it what is doing? It's uh, randomly and automatically distributing uh, browser session requests across uh, all available hosts. Uh, so, uh, and uh, such architecture allows to uh, first of all have a stateless solution. That is to say, you can have any number of GGR instances behind the load balancer. And the last thing I would uh, like to say about GGR today is that this load balancer uh, is uh, was be, was was being used and is using uh, is being used now for running 5000 browser in parallel so this is a proven solution so that was uh, everything related to uh, motivation about uh, the tools i will be uh, showing today and now uh, let's uh, move to the uh, uh, to the d demonstration uh, itself so uh, here is the the program uh, the demonstration uh, I have already uh, told you about the motivation. So the first thing we are going to do today, we are. Uh, I, I will show you how to start Selenoid and its user interface called Selenoid UI uh, on a virtual machine. So, so I will be doing everything uh, in a cloud uh, platform. So here I'm using DigitalOcean, but you can do the same. Uh, in any cloud platform like AWS, Google Cloud, or Microsoft Azure, or anything else. So uh, I have already created uh, three virtual machines for today's uh, demonstration, two machines for running Selenoids, and uh, the third machine for running the GGR load balancer. So you can just guess uh, it by virtual machine name. Uh, these virtual machines are rather small, so for example, you can see that we have uh, only two CPUs, uh, two gigabytes of memory, and 50 gigabytes of hard disk here. So let's start, uh, first of all, uh, the installation of Selenoid on the virtual machine. So we copy the IP address of the virtual machine. We enter to the virtual machine. And uh, we can check that we already have uh, Docker install here, that's the only prerequisite for running Selenoid. So here we have some recent Docker version. And uh, we can also check that we don't have anything running on this machine. We also don't have any uh, images. So everything is empty. That's a clean uh, Docker installation. All in these virtual machines are clean. So now to install uh, Selenoid, what we need to do uh, we need, first of all, to download uh, a uh, standalone uh, installation tool for Selenoid, which is called uh, CM, that stands for Configuration Manager. So you can download this stuff uh, directly from the GitHub. So here is the GitHub page for the CM tool. All this stuff is open source, certainly. Uh, so I'm going to release this page. I'm finding the latest release. And here I can just uh, directly uh, download, I can copy the URL for a binary for your desired platform, Darwin for Mac, Linux for Linux, Windows for Windows. So here I'm showing everything uh, under Linux, so I'm downloading a version for Linux. So uh, uh, you can use your browser to download this tool if you are installing everything to your workstation. But in case of virtual machine, I will just uh, use a built-in downloader uh, command called wget. So just downloading the binary, everything is downloaded, and I can uh, just check that I have now uh, a new binary uh, on my machine. Uh, the problem is that by default, when you download anything from the GitHub, uh, even the binary, uh, it has no execution permissions. So has let's, let's just add uh, the execution permissions to uh, this tool. Uh, having, uh, having done this, we can just execute this binary as a regular command. So we can just uh, type cm, and this is a program. Uh, it also has uh, the help flag allowing you to uh, like to uh, get the help for every command. For example, we have a command called selenoid here. We can type cm selenoid help, and it will show you some uh, subcommands and so on and so forth. So. Every uh, parameters are documented here. 
So in order to start a solenoid, we need to type a very short and straightforward command. This, it looks like this, cm solenoid start minus minus vnc. So this command will uh, do the following. It will first of all download the latest uh, release of solenoid. Then it will download uh, two last uh, images for two last versions of Firefox, Chrome, and Opera on your uh, machine. It will generate uh, automatically a configuration file and start solenoid. So everything, uh, how, how much time it will take depends on your uh, internet connection speed, but usually it takes up to like five, five minutes maximum. And uh, while it's doing this, let's uh, do the same uh, on the second virtual machine because we'll need this virtual machine uh, for configuring the load balancer. So I'm just doing uh, the same stuff here. Sorry. Uh, I'm doing the same stuff here. I'm also uh, downloading the binary, the binary. The second machine. Uh, I'm giving just the same uh, execution permissions. I'm executing the same command. Okay. So uh, here uh, we need to just wait for uh, this command to finish, and uh, uh, when this uh, simple command finished uh, executing we will uh, already be able to run the test. So let's just uh, wait for the latest images to download. So now it's downloading uh, the Chrome 85. Here is the Chrome 84. It will quickly uh, download the images. Okay, it will now download the Opera images here. So everything uh, should be rather fast because uh, how would I say, the majority uh, of the images uh, like fonts, uh, flash player and the base operating system are being reused across the images. So it's, you can see that it's rather fast. Okay, now it's downloading the video recorder images, image and starting Selenoid. So uh, like, in like three minutes, uh, you can now see that you have a Docker container running uh, in your operating system. Uh, now uh, we also need to install a graphical user interface for Selenoid because by default Selenoid was created as a server-side application. That's not requiring, not strictly requiring to have a user interface. Uh, so to install a user interface, we need to issue a very similar command like this, cm Selenoid UI and it's working very fast. It's downloading one image and launching. So now we have uh, two containers running uh, in our operating system. One of them is Selenoid UI running on standard HTTP port 8080. And the second one is Selenoid itself running on standard uh, Selenium port 4444. So depending on your operating system, you may also need to open the ports in the firewall, for example, in here I'm using uh, Ubuntu and uh, I need to uh, just allow accessing these ports. This is done like this. Here, we allow 4444 and also the port 8080. So uh, uh, this is how we uh, install C uh, Selenoid and Selenoid UI on a virtual machine. This takes only several minutes. Uh, let's also take a look at uh, what images were actually downloaded to this machine. So we have an image for Selenoid itself, an image for Selenoid user interface, an image for video recording software, and uh, several uh, images, six images for Opera, Chrome, and Firefox, two last versions you can see here. Okay. So uh, now let's uh, take a look at uh, the Selenoid user interface. So in order to open the user interface, we just uh, copy uh, the virtual machine AP address, and we can open in our browser uh, this AP address on port 8080. Just let me zoom a bit. So here is uh, what is called the Selenoid user interface. Uh, this user interface mainly consi consists of two main parts. The first one is, uh, is the sessions list, so currently, 
we don't have any running browsers. But when we launch our test, we will see the browsers here. Uh, the second uh, part is uh, called uh, capabilities section. So here uh, you can uh, easily uh, copy paste ready to use uh, desired capabilities for any, any uh, desired browser version. So for example, if we choose uh, latest uh, Chrome version 85 here and we choose Java, we will be able to copy uh, capabilities just uh, to our code. We can do the same stuff for Python, for uh, JavaScript and so on. So uh, this is basically how Sen Senoid user interface looks like. Now let's uh, start uh, working with this user interface. Uh, the uh, first thing I would like to show you is, uh, before we dive into running tests, is how to do some manual testing with a Selenoid user uh, interface. So it's uh, very straightforward. Uh, you just uh, select a desired browser version here. You click on the button, create session, and now we will see uh, this browser version uh, running uh, in my browser screen. So just, it will look like this. It's now starting the browser. And here I'm able to see the real browser uh, being ready to execute some manual commands. So I can just maximize my screen, maximize the browser window, and I can just start working with this browser as usually. So for example, I can open uh, our conference uh, website like this. And uh, if I need to somehow uh, debug uh, some, something on this web page, I can just click uh, and open browser, the develop, Chrome developer tools. So everything is working uh, similarly to uh, to, to uh, how how uh, like you are running uh, this browser on your uh, workstation. So here are the browser developer tools. Uh, so everything uh, looks like very similarly. Okay. Uh, so this was the uh, uh, manual testing. This was the manual testing. Uh, let's now take a look at how to run a, an automated test, because usually we need Selenoid for running automated tests. So uh, here uh, I have, let me dive into presentation mode. Okay. So here uh, I have a really straightforward uh, Selenium test using Java and using uh, uh, standard uh, standard uh, Selenium stuff, like uh, creating a new remote web driver. So everybody who have uh, already been working with Selenium should understand this code. This code is doing the following thing. First of all, it's oh, it opens uh, the page duckduckgo.com. It's an anonymous search engine like Google or uh, Bing uh, and so on. Uh, then it just uh, finds a, a request a text input uh, in uh, on this page. It types the word Selenium and presses the enter key. And then it just uh, takes a screenshot uh, of the result of pressing the uh, enter key. So uh, in order to run this test on our uh, Selenoid uh, instance, what we need to do, we need to simply uh, uh, update our Selenium URL in this test. We copy paste uh, an AP address uh, of our virtual machine. We sim simply insert it uh, in our demo test and that's it. We uh, can now uh, run our test. So uh, before we actually run the test, uh, let me enable some uh, features I would like to show you. Uh, so for example, we will now start our test with video and log recording. Um, so an example test overview that's done. Let's enable uh, video and log recording. This is as easy as uh, adding several capabilities to our code, enable video, enable log. So rather uh, straightforward. Now we can launch our test. We will now wait for uh, this test to, uh, to execute and we will check uh, the log and the video file. 
save it uh, during test execution. So my test is uh, starting. Here, I will now be able to see the session running. So it's now used. I will now see a session here. Yep, here is the session. The session is running. And uh, when the session uh, will actually finish, we will be able, so the test has passed. Uh, we can now, for example, open the screenshot. Here is the screenshot of DuckDuckGo page. And uh, now we can go to Selenoid UI and check uh, how easily we could get the videos and logs. So the first thing here, we have now the videos tab. Uh, which is able to show you the video of uh, the session uh, I just recorded. So I can just click here and see what was happening inside the browser. So here's the browser, here's the DuckDuckGo page, and here is my test being executed. So here's a, a, a video of my test. Currently, uh, there is no such tab for uh, the log file, but you can easily uh, get uh, the log by using a very similar address. So you go to Selenoid, the port 4444, you type slash logs, and here you will be able to see the log files for every, uh, every, every, every any session you executed. So here, uh, you just can click uh, on a URL and see the logs uh, of the browser. So this was uh, an example of running tests with video and log recording. And uh, here is uh, how you can uh, take a look at the log file and the video file. So for, so for the for video files, there is a similar uh, feature. You can open the video file uh, using a direct uh, URL like this in the browser. Okay. So uh, sooner or later, you will certainly need to uh, download uh, these files or uh, remove them. So for example, you can attach such a file to your, to your test execution report. But in case if you need to uh, delete this file, you can issue a very, very uh, straightforward uh, request. So let me show you how to do this. Uh, you can just use a regular HTTP client like curl, uh, and you simply uh, issue a, an HTTP delete request you specify the URL for uh, the file you wish to delete. And uh, now we can see that there is no such file here. So files are being uh, automatically removed. So basically uh, that was uh, the first uh, like impression of how uh, Selenoid and Selenoid UI uh, look like. And uh, uh, let me now uh, show you uh, how to create a cluster, how to easily scale this uh, solution. So if you remember, uh, here we have uh, three virtual machines. Uh, on two of these virtual machines, we already installed uh, Selenoids, and uh, the third virtual machine will be a virtual machine we will be, where we will be running our uh, load balancer. So let's now uh, quickly uh, install a load balancer to this virtual machine and see how to execute a test against this load balancer. So we copy paste uh, the address of this third virtual machine. We uh, access this virtual machine using SSH. Uh, here we also have a Docker installed. And uh, now in order to install uh, GGR load balancer, we don't need to memorize anything. We can just go to uh, documentation, which is publicly available and simply uh, start uh, copy pasting uh, commands from browser to my to, to the terminal so it's opening slowly because of uh, the streaming i think just five seconds okay so here is uh, the ggr uh, documentation and uh, while the, the page is uh, opening uh, let me just start uh, copy pasting uh, commands from this documentation. So first of all, I need to create a configuration directory for uh, for this grid router software. Then uh, I need uh, to create a uh, user's HTTP password file using uh, this command. 
Uh, for example, to install this command on uh, Ubuntu, you need to add a package like this. So if you try to issue this command right now, you will see that it doesn't exist on my virtual machine, it's saying HC password not found. And I just need to install one more package uh, to my virtual machine like this. Install. So uh, I know I, I'm now installing the HT password the tool, and now I can continue copy pasting uh, commands to uh, from browser to uh, this virtual machine. So on this step, I'm creating a a file with users and their passwords. So I'm creating a file uh, like this: uh, etc. Grid router users dot HT password. And I'm adding a user with name test and password called a test password. So if you take a look at this file, you will see that it's uh, just a uh, raw text file having the username, then a colon sign, and then the password uh, in encrypted uh, form. Okay. So um, uh, the last two steps I need to do in order to configure the load balancer. Here's the step that I need to run some Selenium implementation, but we already have uh, two Selenoids running on virtual machines. So I will now create a, uh, a so-called uh, quota file, that is to say a file describing uh, which uh, hosts with browser to use for uh, every uh, user. So for example, now we have a user called test, and for this user, we need to create a file cost called uh, test.xml. So we just copy paste some XML, we create a text file, uh, test.xml, we insert uh, our example uh, XML configuration, and we will now, now just uh, change this file a bit to use uh, our virtual machines. So here, for example, I would like to configure uh, my load balancer to serve Chrome browser, for example, version 85, sorry, 85. So uh, I'm uh, feeling the default browser version, which is 85. I am I'm creating a version 85 and specifying the region, that is to say the data center uh, name, which is really optional. Here I'm using uh, FRA, that means Frankfurt, because uh, my virtual machines are are running in Frankfurt right now. So the last thing I need to do, I need to copy paste the IP addresses of uh, the virtual machines, sorry, the virtual machines to my file. So here I insert virtual machine number one, it's Solenoid port 4444. Then I copy paste and uh, I insert the second uh, IP address second IP address here, and that's it. So if, you, if I need to add uh, one more browser version, I can just uh, copy paste the entire uh, stuff like this. So I can add, for example, Chrome 84 like this. So uh, having uh, all these files created, the last step to run a load balancer is to uh, run a Docker container that will be using all these configuration files. So you just simply copy paste a command from documentation like this. It will automatically pull a very small image and run a load balancer container. So here is a running container with the GGR load balancer. Okay. So uh, we can now we can now uh, start uh, running our tests. Ah, okay, we also need to allow port 4444. And we also need to check that here on Selenoid 2 instance where we actually have a running uh, Selenoid, we also uh, uh, allow to access port 4444. So now, check that everything is working as expected, we can simply uh, open one more uh, terminal and uh, simply uh, ping our GGR instance. So I'm just copying the GGR AP address and I'm issuing a very straightforward request, curl HTTP 
an IP address port 4444 slash ping. So I'm getting uh, some response saying that VGR was configured correctly. So now let's uh, run an example test against uh, GGR. Uh, simply let's copy paste uh, our our sure 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 i'm finishing uh so i'm now uh going to sorry and i'm going to uh, uh show you how to run the test against uh the the the, the load balancer so here uh, i have uh, just the same test I was showing you before and the only thing we need to do in our test to use the load balancer we need to update an AP address and we also need to insert the username test and uh, the password test password we created uh, several minutes ago so I think uh, for some of you who were already using online platforms such notation uh, should be uh, straightforward so you should have already seen such notation. And uh, if we now uh, uh, open the, the GGR logs, uh, this, logs, logs. And if we now uh, start uh, running our test, we will see that uh, in reality, our sessions are uh, being uh automatically distributed across uh, the virtual machines so uh, i'm now running the test and here in the log i will see that uh, my session will be created on one of uh, two solenoid hosts i actually uh, I, I created at the beginning of uh, my session so it's uh, attempting to run a session on uh on this uh, virtual machine ending at 171 so on Selenoid 2, if I, uh, and the session is uh, actually created and everything is passing, if I run one more time, probably it will uh, run on the second host. But so far as this distribution is random, uh, probably it will go to the same host. It's just a really uh, random stuff. So I will just uh, try to run one more time a session on the load balancer. Uh, no, it's creating on the same host right now. But anyway, if you run several times, you will see that uh, host uh, session requests are actually being distributed across uh, the host. So that's pretty much uh, everything I would like to show you today. So at the end of my talk, let me show you a slide uh, with uh, useful references and links. Uh, so here there is a GitHub uh, URL uh, with a Solenoid a repository. Uh, in the same organization, you can find repositories for GGR, these demo projects, so everything is there. Here is our Twitter, our Telegram channel, where you can ask any questions related to these tools. Our website with a lot of uh, like uh, URLs to useful articles related to efficient Selenium infrastructure. And our YouTube channel, where we are actually uh, publishing uh, some related videos. So uh, thank you for your attention and you can now ask your questions. Yes, so thank you, Ivan. Uh, that was a very good session. Um, uh, we have a couple of questions, so I'm going to check on the Q&A and read it out for okay. you. So there is a question from uh, Suresh about, do we have Selenoid Docker images for IE or Edge browsers? Uh, how would I say, we have uh, ready to use uh, instructions uh, on how to build such images. Because of uh, license uh, limitations, we have no right to distribute uh, the pre-built images. But anyway, there is a, probably I could just send to discuss channel, seconds, uh, air cube. Because uh, last year uh, there was a Selenium conference in Tokyo. I'll just send the URL. There was a Selenium conference in Tokyo uh, where I was speaking about how to build such images. And uh, in fact, we are providing, uh, we open sourced uh, ready to use instructions, step by step instructions on how to build Windows images running in Docker. 
So uh, simply, I, ju I just I just copy paste the URL to discuss section. You can just go uh, and check. Uh, it seems to be rather straightforward. You can easily run a virtual machine inside a Docker container. So it will work. It's known to work. Yeah. Thank you. So next question we have from Suresh again. Um, can we use Linoid UI with GGR? Uh, yes, uh, you can do this. Uh, the only thing you need to do, so basically, let me, sh no, I, I, will, I will not be showing it. Basically, uh, you will need to run one more small uh, binary like GGR itself. Uh, this binary is needed to uh, actually collect all the sessions from the uh, entire uh, Selenium cluster, and you. No, so, so uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, you can easily achieve uh, this stuff by adding one more uh, running uh, application to the cluster. So this is doable, certainly, and you can uh, configure uh, your user interface to uh, create the sessions against the GGR and see all the sessions being executed inside uh, all the cluster on every host. This is doable, certainly. Yeah. Next question we have from Webho. Is it possible to get HAR network logs and console logs using Selenoid? Uh, basically, uh, yes, because uh, currently uh, Selenoid images for Chrome, for example, uh, they come with uh, built-in uh, Chrome developer tools uh, support. That is to say, you can, first of all, create a Selenium session using standard uh, Selenium client libraries uh, for your preferred programming language, and then you can directly uh, connect to uh, Chrome Developer Tools WebSocket and fetch such information without using any uh, external proxies. Because uh, a, a well-known approach for getting uh, uh, HR files is uh, using some external software like uh, I don't know uh, HA proxy or stuff like this. There are different proxies allowing to get uh, these uh, these requests, but currently. With uh, developer tools, you can do this directly without using an external software. Yeah. So that's the uh, end of our session. Thank you so, all. I yeah. uh, hope, hope, uh, hope to see you in the next years offline because <laughs> I prefer offline formats. <laughs>